Churchill fu un grande stratega, un grande oratore, un grande uomo politico e anche un uomo di lettere. Studiare i suoi discorsi può essere un ottimo esercizio multidisciplinare per gli studenti del liceo e anche un piacere intellettuale. Qui vi proponiamo il discorso che scrisse e pronunciò alla radio il 23 dicembre del 1940, rivolgendosi a noi italiani, che nel giugno precedente avevamo dichiarato guerra a Francia e Inghilterra. Ascoltiamolo. Poi, in una serie di esercizi, ne proporremo l'analisi. Tonight I speak to the Italian people. And I speak to you from London, the heart of the British island and of the British Commonwealth and Empire. I speak to you what the diplomatists call words of great truth and respect. We are at war. That is a very strange and terrible thought. Whoever imagined until the last few melancholy years that the British and Italian nations would be trying to destroy one another. We have always been such friends. We were the champions of the Italian Risorgimento. We were the partisans of Garibaldi. We were the admirers of Mazzini and Cavour. All that great movement towards the unity of the Italian nation which lighted the 19th century, was aided and was hailed by the British Parliament and British public. Our fathers and our grandfathers longed to see Italy freed from the Austrian yoke and to see all minor barriers in Italy swept away so that the Italian people and their fair land might take an honored place as one of the leading powers upon the continent and as a brilliant and gifted member of the family of Europe and of Christendom. We have never been your foes till now. In the last war against the barbarous Huns, we were your comrades. For 15 years after that war, we were your friends. Although the institutions which you adopted after that war were not akin to ours and diverged, as we think, from the sovereign impulses which had commanded the unity of Italy, we could still walk together in peace and goodwill. Many thousands of your people dwelt with ours in England. Many thousands of our people dwelt with you in Italy. We liked each other, we got on well together. There were reciprocal services, there was amity, there was esteem. And now we are at war. Now we are condemned to work each other's ruin. Your aviators have tried to cast their bombs upon London. Our armies are tearing and will tear your African empire to shreds and tatters. We are now only at the beginning of this somber tale. Who can say where it will end? Presently, we shall be forced to come to much closer grip. How has all this come about? And what is it all for? Italians, I will tell you the truth. It is all because of one man. One man and one man alone has ranged the Italian people in deadly struggle against the British Empire and has deprived Italy of the sympathy and intimacy of the United States of America. That he is a great man, I do not deny. But that after 18 years of unbridled power, he has led your country to the horrid verge of ruin, that can be denied by none. It is all one man, one man who, against the crown and royal family of Italy, against the Pope and all the authority of the Vatican and of the Roman Catholic Church, against the wishes of the Italian people who had no lust for this war. One man has arrayed the trustees and inheritors of ancient Rome upon the side of the ferocious 
pagan barbarians. There lies the tragedy of Italian history. There stands the criminal who has wrought the deed of folly and of shame. We were content with Italian neutrality. During the first eight months of the war, we paid great deference to Italian interests. But all this was put down to fear. We were told we were effete, worn out, an old chatterbox people, mouthing outworn shibboleths of 19th century liberalism. But it was not due to fear. It was not due to weakness. The French Republic, for the moment, is stunned. France will rise again. But the British nation and Commonwealth of Nations across the globe, and indeed, I may say, the English-speaking world, are now aroused. They are on the march or on the move. And all the forces of modern progress and of ancient culture are ranged behind them. Why have you placed yourself you who were our friends and might have been our brothers, why have you placed yourselves in the path of this avalanche, now only just started from its base, to roll forward on its predestined track? And what is the position of Italy today? Where is it that the Ducey has led his trusting people after 18 years of dictatorial power what hard choice is open to them now? It is to stand up to the battery of the whole British Empire on sea, in the air, and in Africa, and to the vigorous counterattack of the Greek nation, or, on the other hand, to call in Attila over the Brenner Pass with his hordes of ravenous soldiery and his gangs of Gestapo policemen to occupy, to hold down, and to protect the Italian people, for whom he and his Nazi followers cherish the most bitter and outspoken contempt that is on record between races. There is where one man, and one man only, has led you. And there I leave this unfolding story until the day comes, as come it will, when the Italian nation will once more take a hand in shaping its own fortune. Churchill non lesse alcune parti del discorso. Nel primo esercizio ci chiederemo perché e nel rispondere capiremo alcune delle costanti limitazioni geopolitiche della nostra penisola. <totipo>